Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Longley's Lime Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Longley. Remember to like, follow, subscribe on all of our social media, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you can find us. We're at Longley's Line. My personal, of course, is Stephen Longley. Longley's with a zero instead of an O. And remember to follow our studio here at Light Style Studio. As you guys know, we bring on uh, different guests every week, and today is no different. We have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Uh, Chad William. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Pleasure so, to be. Before we get cooking on anything, go ahead and promote all your social medias, where people can find you, what you want people to see, anything like that. Cool. Uh, for one, that's funny. What 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 we what you want people to see <laughs> as an actor? It's like you have to be vulnerable and open. So. Yeah. It's like I'm a very public person. I love that privacy, mm -hmm. but it's like that's what home is for. Yeah. You know, so it's great to be here, Stephen. Chad William Michael. Uh, you can find me, Chad William Michael, on Facebook and Instagram, preferably. Uh, still Chadness is my handle, but Chad William Michael, YouTube. Um, chocolatechad.com <laughs> is uh, where I've uploaded a lot of my radio and podcast. So okay. I'm a fellow... You know, this is our first time I feel officially meeting. Yeah. Again, you feel like a familiar soul. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm here for your entertainment, and um, I'm here to serve, you know, my community. I'm learning. I'm not alone in this journey, and yeah. we're all here to just be authentic and be ourselves, and I feel like that's that's a recipe for a long and prosperous life, even if it is short. You yeah. Know? It's funny when you say that, too, that, oh, I look familiar, if anything like that. I... Have you ever seen the show New Girl? No. Or there's an actor named Jake Johnson. Okay. Who he and I share similar facial qualities. So every time somebody says, oh, you, you look a little familiar. Well, have you ever seen New Girl? I'm right there. I'm Hell his yeah. body double. Hell yeah. <laughs> there's a friend of the show, Jeremy Liu. Go ahead and check out his previous episode. Every time we work together, he's a photographer and he'd be – will be working with somebody. He goes, have you ever seen New Girl? I'm like, I have. That's right. Nick, right there. Like, oh, my God, that's right. That's and they'll, right. they'll do that constantly. So I have one of those one of those kind of faces. Familiar a face soul. for radio. I don't know if it's the face. It's, <laughs> it's a familiar soul. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to a successful show and Thanks blessing again. our community and uh, meeting together. Peace. So to start off, where are you from originally? Military brat, mm -hmm. born in Germany. Oh, wow. And came to upstate New York, Syracuse, New York, where my parents are from. Okay. And spent most of my youthful upbringing there mm -hmm. till I was 26. Oh, wow. And then I feel like that Saturn's return, 27 to 30, was my journey, right? And mm -hmm. I, uh, I love thinking of Batman Begins. Yeah. Remember when Bruce Wayne leaves for years to train and mm -hmm. kind of go, go within, right? And f yeah. and w faces fears. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. You know, I felt like I grew up in a very cozy family, mm -hmm. tons of friends, big church, a lot of love. Kind of lazy. I felt like I got really I was starting to get a little lazy and too comfortable. And I felt like right. I needed that, like my journey. I needed to go like go into the cave and find what I was made of you know I feel yeah. I was given everything but it's like well, what am I even producing here you know I yeah I looked the part right suit and tie and well groomed but very empty I felt and I mm -hmm. felt very angry because I felt like I was very adult like very quick sure you know and this return to my roots of just riding my bicycle it's a you know I it was an exercise I often remember I met with a very successful person. He's like, well, what do you love to do? I was like, I don't know. I was like an autopilot. You know, I was very active and busy. Yeah. And I just hopped on a bicycle again. It just changed my mindset. And I started doing more and more of the things I loved and less of the things I did not like. Right. And to the outsider, it was like, what are you doing? You're throwing your life away. I'm like, I think I'm gaining. I feel like I'm gaining my life. And you yeah. get tired of explaining it, so you just leave. You know, so I yeah. left with... I think no money in my pocket. I mm -hmm. had uh, free flight privileges. Uh, we got a family of pilots. Okay. And I started traveling and learned how to trade and cook and clean and mm -hmm. and 
kind of provide for yourself. Yeah. Do things yeah. Like that. I, you know, I'm just me, right? I grew mm-hmm. up in a big family, so it was an opportunity to find out what I'm supposed to be doing on this planet. And when you had the chatter of mom and dad and your old all the people that really care about you don't want you to be in a harm's way yeah they'll keep you in the nest yeah and it's like god ah, stop loving me you know stop <laughs> yeah. loving me i gotta me do I gotta what go, i need to do gotta go figure it out and i feel like challenges of life and like learning how to communicate with strangers and earn their trust i mean not without its failures every day yeah and some of our best mentors i would feel say if you're not failing you ain't trying it's true yeah or fail forward fail often kind of thing yeah and i really live by that and i fail every day and i disappoint people in myself and it's okay you know what i mean it's just mm-hmm. a part of the journey and i want to be the best possible being i could be on this planet and really leave it way better than i found it yeah and it starts with myself especially to kind of jump a little bit forward when it comes to being an actor you will hear no more often times than you hear yes because you'll go out for however many things as you go out for and you will hear no majority of the time Mm -hmm. and then those one two three four however many yeses that you get kind of give you that little bit okay i'm doing it right yeah this this feels good because those no's as much as they suck yeah they help build you because then it gives you that little bit of tougher skin that you need when it comes to this because there's been times where i've been in an audition and i was at an audition in san francisco i made the entire room laugh somebody was reading me with me there was a the camera person the director was here the writer was here we read all the lines and i they were like okay improv something So then I set a line, every person died laughing, the guy I was reading with had to stop what he was doing because he was laughing, didn't get the part. But how good did that feel? It was awesome. And I was like, okay, I feel that. that, that, Yeah. Like it felt great. And then the woman was like, well, you know, you're not right for this part, but I will keep you in mind for the future. I love that. You know? Yes. And then to go back, when you were younger, what did you want to do for a living? Did you have any idea? You know, when you're a kid and you kind of think, oh, I'm going to be a firefighter or an mm-hmm. astronaut or a dog catcher or trainer or something. Did you have anything in mind? No. No? No, I very, I feel, I was always very present, mm-hmm. like as a kid. And I became, I feel like, angry when the people that you trust kind of like guide you out of the present moment into like, what are you going to do with yourself? What? Yeah. And I feel like I was, I, we, we grew up, I grew up flying a lot too. We had a family airport and my Mm -hmm. dad was, you know, in the army, a lot of our families in the army, a lot of pilots. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I went and interviewed with all the local police departments and grew up with a lot of guns and like, love that bravissimo kind of, or the bravado lifestyle. And they wouldn't take me, you know, and I was like really disappointed and heartbroken, but my father I was like, I want to be a helicopter pilot in the army, and he's like, Well, you need, you owe me one year of college first. So this was I was eighteen, graduating high school. Mm-hmm. So, all it took a year to like all the interviewing and testing, and I got in. It was a seven year contract to fly helicopters for the wow. military at nineteen years old. I swore in. Yeah. And then I, you know, I had a fun, sexy girlfriend at the time, and I really meditated. I was like, Do I really want to like shoot at people? and sure. get shot at possibly and yeah. the answer was no like i'm i felt like and i'm still i run from and go around altercation mm-hmm. i've never gotten in a fight in my entire life yeah. like I, you know I, i'm you know you know you kind of like want to but at the end i i don't like getting hurt you know i don't like yeah. stubbing a toe avoid conflict i avoid conflict and yeah. i finished up college became a white collar crazy man and then started the traveling and mm-hmm. i found acting with nothing destitute right out and i yeah. went, i made it to hawaii with 100 bucks in my pocket right i took a one-way flight and that you know quickly so i'm on craigslist looking for some hustle you know i made a trade mm-hmm. with the hostel uh, i showed up and i'm like i got 25 bucks yeah can i trade and they're like nope we don't you know we don't need your i started doing shit anyway i was doing the dishes and cleaning up and they're like well 
uh, you know, can you build us a gazebo? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not handy <laughs> sure, man at all. Yeah. And it literally came together. Like it worked out and I got two weeks of oatmeal and a cot. Wow. And I went surfing for the first time on Christmas, 2012. Oh, wow. And um, I was like, okay, what's the next thing? So Craigslist and I'm mm -hmm. looking and a uh, special forces commander needed to rescue the British prime minister from the evil clutches of Russian terrorists. And I was like, fuck yeah, I've, <laughs> I've watched enough Rambo. Like yeah, I, I could fake this. this. Yeah. It was the best time of my life. <laughs> Two weeks of kung fuing and cracking necks and figuring out how to act on camera. And it was like wild. It was such a wild self discovery journey that a couple weeks later I went to LA with 40, 50 bucks in my pocket and yeah. a pocket watch. Put the pocket watch down as a down payment at the hostel, made a trade in Venice Beach for, mm -hmm. again, room and board. And was and that the first bit of acting? That you did? The only time. That I've was the ever, only time ever. you ever did it. 27 years old, 26, 27, What was it that kind of stood out to you? Was it the getting to play a character or was it just kind of, that sounds like fun. Let's do that. Pure joy. Yeah. Pure challenge, pure bliss, pure discomfort. Like all of it was so present. Mm -hmm. All the athletics and everything kind of came together and I was like, you know, I can do this. Yeah. I don't know. And something in me was like, I, I found what I love. Right. And I've never felt like that mm -hmm. other than riding a bicycle. So I would say first, I'm an athlete. Second, I'm an actor. Third, I'm a solar salesman. You know, for now. I mean, yeah. doing that. Because like full-time acting is, you can bring it all together and you mm -hmm. notice that you're not as stupid as you thought. Yeah. Like you, you have to be some sort, you have to ha be intelligent to read lines, embody, feel, express. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things that they say is the actors that play dumb mm -hmm. are actually the smartest wow. people that you'll ever meet yeah. because it's actually really difficult to play dumb. A lot of people think, oh, you're just, you're playing an idiot. Okay. Yeah. Be stupid. Convince me that Correct. you're dumb. But then a lot of people are like, well, hey, man, man. Yeah. like that's, that's not it. You have to actually put thought into what you're doing like an example from uh, blue mountain state the alan rich uh, richson he played thad who was this big dumb lovable idiot you follow anything that he does he seems like the most intelligent person you've ever seen and because playing dumb is actually difficult yeah. which a lot of people don't realize and to surrender yourself yes and to surrender yourself to mm -hmm. that and being judged for being stupid yeah and it's like I, I don't want, you know, I mean, I turned, I was asking you earlier if you've turned down any, you know, turned down anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, I do because, like, I feel like my character, my ego, how I want to be presented. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I'm like, I shouldn't have turned that down, but it's like, I want to leave room because I've done roles I didn't enjoy mm -hmm. necessarily or they were a little bit too gruff for me. And I was like, I want to leave room. I'd rather not work and have empty space to be bored and be more creative and yeah. then allow the more things that I do enjoy. Like if I, I always feel carpe diem, I always feel like if today were my last and whatever it is that I'm doing, if I died in that moment, like what vibration am I trying? Like, cause I feel like the universe doesn't know the difference. Yeah. You know, it goes or whatever on with or it goes you. on yeah. and you go on, your energy goes on for all eternity. So if I'm playing a mass murdering maniac, like, I don't know. Like I have to feel it. I have to yeah. feel like I want to be that. I have to be that character and and let the audience believe that I am that. Mm -hmm. You have to put all yourself into it. Yeah. So yeah. more like action adventure and romance comedy and like yeah. lighthearted. Without trying to get yourself pigeonholed in Correct. anything too, because say you take that one role mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden. He did a really good job at that. Mm -hmm. And then you get pigeonholed in something that you don't even necessarily Enjoy. want to do. Correct. So then after you're going through Hawaii, you move to LA, you put the pocket watch down. What was your next step when you get to LA? What do you do from there? Enjoy the journey. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Go to the beach. Work out. Do the things that you love to do, and just put the feelers out there. Yeah. Get vulnerable. Talk to people. See what's up. Like, go online. I mean, if you're, you got to become a great hunter and gather. Yeah. You know, and if you are lazy and you know order in all the time, and then you want to be change up your total dynamics. You have to like close your eyes and like, what does it feel like to be an actor? 
And I'm being, one of my, the people, one of the guys, there was a guy there at the hostel and we got the cho- talking like this and he's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to an audition in Hollywood, down, you know, downtown Hollywood. Yeah. And we're in Venice, right? If, you know, there's a pretty much a big gap between Venice Beach and downtown Hollywood. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll go with you. So I literally had to go get my pocket watch and leave the trade I had with, I, I had like 20, 25 bucks in my pocket mm-hmm. that paid for one night at this hostel down in ho- Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I went to this audition. I didn't get it, but like, it was like that my first Hollywood audition. And it yeah. was really cool and like terrifying and yeah. fun and <laughs> exhilarating. And one thing left, it's very synchronistic and the universe is really perfect. Like, I feel like if you take risk and you're risking failure and you're out there, like the universe sends beautiful angels in human form to like mm-hmm. help you along the path i bump into this other guy on the uh the famous hiking trail there uh he's like what are you doing here i'm like well, what are you doing you know i'm hiking what are you doing he's like, what's up he's like i'm like yeah i'm just i got a hostel for the night i'm just going with the flow he's like you can stay in my garage it's fully furnished no kidding like wow and I did that for 10 days and then mm-hmm. it led to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing you know and you just yeah. it's like very Life is faith-based, I think, whether you think you're in control or not, but you just got to be willing. And, like, I just knew I love acting. So Mm -hmm. it was, like, months of just door knocking and sneaking into the agencies and finding my way up to the top floor. I'm like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm looking for an agent. Like, you can't be here, kid, you know. Mm -hmm. How'd you get through? I'm like, I'm an old salesman. I brought cookies with me. Like, you know, (laughs) security guard let us Who doesn't love cookies? Come on. (laughs) So I was like, I'll be back. I will see you at the perfect time, you know. Yeah. I what the, I ended up doing some like extra work and t- mm-hmm. on TV shows. I found radio. I was in a, a an old childhood friend invited me over, and, and there was a director there that lived, a new director there, and a comedian, and all sorts of people. Right in yeah. LA, like a lot of people are focused on the acting. There's a lot of everyone there, but mm-hmm. again, your vi- what's your vibe? You yeah. attract your tribe, kind of thing. And I got into radio, and I had my own, got my own show in L.A., and local radio show. Sure, and then yeah. I, I just recently considered myself a comedian, but I started way back then, you mm-hmm. know, getting up on stage, getting booed, and being terrified, and yeah. sucking terribly. You That's know? how every comedian starts, yeah. too. All of them, they feel that sort of rush, and then know what they need to do to keep it going. Because yeah. that kind of first bomb mm-hmm. that... I get it on the inside in inside baseball all the time mm-hmm. with all the comedians. I love hearing them talk about it. That's how m- most of them went. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they had a partially good set, mm-hmm. but nine times out of ten, they bombed. Yeah, and you're getting booed, yeah. but you're on stage yeah. and you're feeling that rush coming in. And there's something about when it comes to the performance standpoint that you're there and the butterflies are going. It's awesome. You're like, okay. Here we go. Let's do this. Yeah. And you have to cry or you have mm-hmm. to laugh. Or you have to bring some sort of energy. And then it's just, okay, it's done. And, yeah. <laughs> and then you feel it the whole time and it's just exhilarating it's amazing, as right? you go through. What was the radio show? Was it kind of like a Bob the hour of power or something? It's called The Hour of Power. And I yeah. actually brought it into Reno and I did a lot of hour oh, of power really? here. And then it turned into, you know, it would be very just what we're talking about and mm-hmm. you know i'd have sometimes i'd have guests but it was more singular and i would just kind of talk about just the power of the mind and like yeah po- positive thoughts and optimism and mm-hmm. just speak from the heart it was all improv like i love improv the reno improv group here like i love that i yeah. love just being present and having no script you know yeah. you're your own like you're your own director and writer when you're you're a comedian in a way mm-hmm and then I, I ended up, uh, after a lot of rejection in L.A., I literally gave up in a, in a healthy way. I was like, I'm, not, I'm done. Like, I'm done trying. Like, I, I felt, like, really rejected and down and out. And I feel yeah. like there was only one other memorable time before that that I actually, like, prayed to something outside of myself. And I was like, you know, if I'm not supposed to be here, I'm cool. I'll go home. I plenty of things to yeah. do. There's no fault or shame. No, it's I like, was like, yeah. I tried. Yeah. Like, two, three months of door knocking and rejection. I was like... I, I feel pretty good, but something in me, my intuition was like, keep walking up La Brea. Mm-hmm. And I, it was in West Hollywood, and I mm-hmm. kept walking up La Brea, and there was this 
dumpy looking theater and i was like i'm here to make movies man i'm a movie guy yeah <laughs> and i ended up literally 10 minutes of mental argument i literally walked up the stairs you know there's no there was no invitation i just walked up there to check it out there was actually people sitting in chairs and they're like hey what's up i'm like i'm i'm an actor you know and they're like well we're all auditioning for this play you should audition and I was like, okay. So I literally auditioned for this rendition of Moby Dick, and I got the role for four months. <laughs> what part? Uh, da da Dagu, oh. Captain Ahab's <laughs> right hand man. You know, just always there, but not too many lines, which was perfect. Yeah, which is always a fun thing that not a lot of people. Everybody wants to be the main character. Everybody wants to be that Leonardo DiCaprio, that Brad Pitt. Good luck. That whoever they want to be. Mm -hmm. There's a point in me mm -hmm. where every time anybody asks me how I want my acting career to go, mm -hmm. I want to make it where I can be a full-time actor. Yeah. Where I don't need to be that front man who no. the camera's on constantly, who mm -hmm. I have to hold the show. If they offered it to me, sure, sure, I'd love to do it. But if I could be a recurring character, yes. my favorite thing when it comes to watching any sort of movies, TV, anything that it comes with, I always like when somebody pops up, you go, it's that guy. That's right. I love that guy. That's I love right. watching that guy. Like a, like a Steve Howey or Ron Perlman or somebody who's this big name that you love to see yeah. and they're working. They're putting in the work and they're actually making a living doing what they're doing what a dream come true you know that's the the entire point of i think any of us actors that are trying to do it where if we could make it a full-time thing mm -hmm. where this is what we get to do mm -hmm. we're happy that's the dream yeah like oh no i have to do three four more auditions today darn yeah and then i also have to read another script for tomorrow that so i get to be fun. a part of i'll it's do awesome it it's nine awesome. times out of ten you Cheers know what I mean? That. Would you like a little bit more or something? I'm perfect in the moment. Thank you. Okay. So you decide. We'll celebrate at the end. We'll celebrate a little at the end. So you decide, okay, I am I did this play. Do you then decide now I'll move back? Or do you think maybe I'll stick it out for a little bit longer? Right after you are in the Moby Dick play, mm -hmm. do you decide – now it's time to go back because this was fun, mm -hmm. but I've been trying so hard to just get this one thing. Now I'll go back. Or do you think I'll stick it out a little bit longer? I think that's a great question. I feel as though we have free will to make those choices, but also at the same time, we're actually, I feel like being done to, we have this journey and path that you can, if you can fight it all you want, but like life will make you do it. Yeah. So I have my predestined journey of course, maybe this illusion of free will, which is wonderful. However, great question. After the play, uh, I actually during right before it went on set, I got injured pretty bad, um, and I couldn't walk for a few days. And I was like, I'm gonna, fi I'm gonna fix myself. I gotta fix myself. Like no one's around to help me. I yeah. didn't call mom and dad. No one knew I got hurt. And I was staying with a buddy. Just you know had to figure it out mm -hmm. and like uh, t t rested for a few days and it just became more of my character i had a really heavy limp you I was know about I was to ask beat was up, it a like, leg or an arm both both my legs yeah. you know i i was doing a front f flip and i'm a bit of a gymnast still too i can still flip around so but we were doing these big flips and in, in class and crossfit class and i i knew i shouldn't have done it but it was predestined <laughs> i needed i needed to hurt myself and yeah. i did and what that happened i I left right after the play was over and I went up north to Washington State and I did this 10 day silent retreat. Okay. Uh, it's a Vipassana practice, it's just breath, breath based sensation. And I heard about this 10 days of silence. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, free up front. You know, if you pass the course, 10 day course, it's nine days in silence, 10 days you break silence and you're okay. able to talk to your comrades. And then you can donate for future students so you're not right you're not i'm gonna pay x amount of dollars for room and board and good food and all this stuff no it's like a egoless journey of like you were there to surrender to med try and meditate for 12 hours a day yeah. sitting still which is st almost i don't think i've ever done it and i've done countless you know i've done 
25 of these. I've sat 25 courses up to 30 days at a time. I did so I pretty much became a monk in a way for three, four, three to four years. And in wow. between there, I was coming into Reno mm -hmm. and doing th theater mm -hmm. and improv and radio and like still working my craft that I absolutely adored and loved. Yeah. But on a couple TV show sets, I met some really high caliber actors, crystal eyed, clear, very intelligent. You can, you can feel their presence. And I was yeah. like, I don't have that. <laughs> I want that. Yeah. And I'm going to go find out how to do it. So that's the self-discovery journey that I'm on. And I feel like I use meditation to kind of like tap into that star power. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously you have so many more benefits of that selfish endeavor. I mean, yeah. it really makes me a better, helps me become aware that I'm who I am, yeah. you know, whatever that is. But Making yourself more sure of yourself. I Yeah, self-confident and yeah. even knowing that you're... Maybe it is, you, you need to clean it up in certain areas, but still yeah. you're conscious. Then maybe consciously cynic, you know, like, right. so I feel I have no excuses anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, and then life g gets done to you. And you know, I just focus on, I am a working paid actor. I am, I am mm -hmm. this, I am that. And then all that self-doubt always kind of starts, still creeps in when you're not working. Yeah. And then honestly, the, the more you put yourself out there, I mean, the people find out. And I'm, I feel like I've been a great sub. Like I've, all, I'm wor working on the sidelines, and like Chad would be great for this. Mm -hmm. You know, someone doesn't show up or whatnot. And um, I've been very blessed. Yeah. Very blessed. I'm. A, I feel I am now a working actor. Yeah. Like, you know, that's awesome. Which is the goal. It is the for it any is, for yeah. anybody that wants to pursue pursue this, like we were mm -hmm. just talking about earlier. It's you want to be a paid actor where you can do it enough to support yourself yes. and you get to do what you love. And there's a thing to go back on that. Chad Palminteri, who's a big time guy, director, did um, a Bronx Tale. He was in Night yeah. at the Roxbury. He's done okay. a whole, all kinds of stuff. And I listened to his show and he gives tips to younger actors or anybody that's doing acting and says, one of the main things you have to remember is to show up. Yes. Doesn't matter if you think already you're not going to be right for the role. If you are ill prepared, X, Y, and Z comes mm -hmm. in. If you're there, the people, you might find something during the audition. The people might be like, I like his look, but not for this, mm -hmm. but I like it for this. Mm -hmm. And it might come back later on. And then as long as you show up and you're there, then nine times out of 10 or more like six times out of 10 because it doesn't happen right. all the time. But when you stay consistent in this business, something will come your way. Yes. And then you'll meet other people and you'll be a part of something and then you can make friendships and partnerships and you can learn. And then there's, you know, a big thing with the show. There are people that I've met throughout my acting journey that somebody will bring me on for this and then somebody that's working on this is doing a different project and then they'll reach out to me and be like, hey, we have this coming up. Could you do it? What do you think? Like, sure. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, I'm not available that day, but I can do it this other day. And then you can actually try and find a way to do what you love with these people that you never worked with before. I love that. But they find a way to get to you. I love that. So you're here doing plays and you do you bring your radio show from la over to here and just continue to do that and then find a radio station while you're also it just naturally happens it's like i just really feel like when you're present and you know again great question and i feel like you're like how 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 right just in life like yeah. how can i connect the dots i feel like that is not up to us at yeah. all you can scheme all you want, and the more you scheme, the more it blocks yeah. the magic of of the universe. And being authentic and honest with yourself, you know, we were talking about, you know, kind of the roles that you would, that may be offered, and do I take it, do I not take it, or just am I desperate to just do anything, you know? So we all feel that. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want to be an actor and work. Yeah. Wow, you know, and... The best opportunities came from me being authentic and honest and saying, no, thank you, mm -hmm. because that opened the door for the right thing, right? So, for example, my first feature film that the reason I'm back here in Reno is because I did a film a couple of years ago and my first feature film and the way I got that, 
I showed up for an audition. I was not into it at all. It was, no offense, it was some, like, doctor TV show, and I was like, God dang it, you know? Like, yeah. I just, this, no, I don't, you know, I, I want to do movies. I'm very ADHD, like, to be trapped. It's a nightmare to be trapped in a, Get a TV show character yeah. that you're like, this sucks. Like, that's why I like movies, because you could maybe be on set for six months to a year, and that's cool, and that's mm -hmm. done. Uh, however, I was like, you know, I cr did terrible at this audition. I fumbled my lines, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, I don't know. I For some reason, I was in a theater show with one of the casting directors, interesting okay. enough. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I know Chad's good, and I know he could. he's really good. We, we've done a show together. Give him another chance. So they actually called me back in to, like, t take a moment, get, the, get your lines down. Yeah. And I did. I actually did great. And, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, a few days later, they offered me this paid TV show role. Wow. And I was like, I just can't do it. Yeah. I just can't get into you it. I'm really sorry. It. I really appreciate it. And, my, and uh, Justine at True Talent, she's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Are you stupid? <laughs> I was like, I yeah. just can't fake it anymore. Yeah. I've done so many things I've hated in my life. And I was like, I just can't do it anymore. So in that honesty, though, the same production company, they're like, you know what? We want you to audition for this guy. And it was a feature film, my first feature film. And I got a lead role in there a feature film. Yeah. I went to St. Peaks. I'm a beach baby. Mountains are great, but I'm a beach baby. Mm -hmm. So I went to St. Pete, Florida for 10 months and just did a lot of comedy and worked the table, you know, at the restaurants. Just to, And then got an agent in St. Yeah. Pete, Tampa. And just doing all, tons of auditions every week. Mm -hmm. I think I got one vitamin commercial out of 10 months, but it's cool. Yeah, so still I, something. I come back from my feature film premiere at the Summit Movie Theater. I I mean, what a dream come true to yeah. see yourself in a theater. I'm like, I got to go back to Reno. And and then one thing led to another. I was on set getting murdered on a horror film. And then, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I've been working ever since September. Mm -hmm. And then I found Solar to be an awesome, I'm an outdoor cat athlete and i'm like what can i do while i'm becoming a working paid actor yeah. to make a living and bide your time yeah. I'm, i've been a salesman door knocker since i was seven years old you know so solar i found a great solar opportunity to help the community with solar with their homes and stuff mm -hmm. i feel very blessed so it's like th that sweet surrender but have your goal have a definitive vision and and be focused, be laser focused, and don't listen to anyone or yeah. your, even your own mind saying you, you can't do this. And you're always preparing. Like, I'm always studying. I, I go to the movie. I love going to the movies oh, yeah. by myself, front row and center, it. and I'm studying. It's a film study. It's not leisure time for me. Mm -hmm. It's film study time. And you just embodying that. And I, you know, I got to see myself on the big screen. I was like, I envisioned that countless times before it actually happened. Yeah. Sitting in the front, I always watch the credits at the end. And just so grateful for all the people because I've done a lot of the other jobs on set, mm -hmm. I, which I love. And I've come to find I really love acting. Like, that's all I want to yeah. do. I've snuck on set as a PA and then, like, auditioned for acting gigs that came up on, the, mm -hmm. on it. And they're like, what do you – I thought you were a PA. And I'm like, mm. I don't know what anything is. I'm just kind of faking it. I'm, yeah. You know, and they're like, well, do, we want you to audition for this. Like, you're really good. And I was like, thank you. Like, <laughs> I've become – I feel a good actor. Yeah. I want to become great, but it's like one step at a time. Don't rush the journey. And it's not in the getting of a thing that I, makes me happy, which is awesome. I mean, you do feel great. Yeah. But feel it now. Feel it as it's already done now. Bring yourself from your future self into the present moment. Mm -hmm. You know, these roles don't define us. Yeah. Or make us or the destination. I may never make it, but it's like today on the way here. Uh, I rarely drive in rush hour. I mean, that's just why I'm my own boss. But I was <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going to a podcast right now. Nothing's going to fucking get me down. Like, And I was just like playing music and playing my affirmations and just enjoyed the traffic. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, bless these, I was like, bless these people. Because of them, our society is together. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you as an electrician, I respect that. You know, I have a master plumber in my, in my family, a master electrician. I've done all of that. I know what I don't want to be when I grow up. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done a lot of things I've just not liked very well. And I'm like, what, sure. what would yeah. it be like if I was doing something I loved? Right? Yeah. And that's how we, I think we have that common denominator. And when you reached out to me, hey, I interview with fellow actors. And I, I appreciate that you're willing to meet me for a, you know, because we've just first time we've officially yeah. met. Hey, meet me for a walk on the river. And you're like, yeah. I'm like, 
you know what? Good enough. I'll meet this guy. Thing is, I felt my intuition was like, you got to show up. This guy's. In, it's going to be a fun podcast and interaction. So I really, really appreciate yeah, being of course. here. It's like how we kind of talked about before. I this whole show is to be fun and to kind of get people more comfortable to kind of tell tell their story because sometimes people get uncomfortable in front of the camera or talking to a stranger totally or, natural. or doing something. Yeah. So if there's a point where it's like, oh, well, tell me more mm -hmm. or let's meet or let's do something. Sure. Why yeah. not? Let's yeah. do it. If for whatever to make you feel more comfortable doing something like this, I'm all about it. I love that. And I love plus, your willingness. You get to, you get to see yourself on screen. What was that film called? Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem. Yeah, okay. you get rented on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, three ninety nine. I thought about the same thing. I did a short film with Mad Wife Productions. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. So we actually had Andrew on the show, and he came awesome. and talked about some of his stuff that he's done. And I felt that same sort of way when the short film was on Tubi. So it's on a streaming network. That's awesome. And I was like, it's on a streaming network? Yeah. I went home. I put it on. My wife comes home. She goes, what are you doing? I'm like, look. Yeah. It's me. Look at that guy. <laughs> I'm right on TV. Or then I'll get – I've done um, – Dreams do become a reality if yeah. you're persistent and consistent and believe. Only mm -hmm. you can believe in yourself. And it's like you're the one that opens up the doors in your own mind before yeah. they're opened in the physical world. So that's like the thing I love to share with people is, yeah, whatever you want to become, you just make sure it's your path. Like yeah. and you need to check in with whoever the boss is in a way like, mm -hmm. you know, are, am I on my own? Am I doing the right thing? Right. Not only for myself, but for my family, like in that for electrician, solar as we get more and more of these acting things that we we, we, love, we love. Yeah. It brings us joy. And the other point that you said where you say you're a good actor and you want to be great, the only way to get great is consistency. Yeah. And that comes with anything that you do for electrical work, learning the solar trade, doing something like that. The only way to really get better and to do more and to make yourself, quote unquote, a professional is to be consistent and to always be pushing forward. And even if there's something that you see where you go, I'm not 100% sure if I want to do this, but I'm interested in it. Yep. And then you go out of your comfort zone and you do something and you find that other gear, you know, because as you're moving along this entire time, you're trying to get good, you're trying to get better, then you do something a little different and then it flips that other switch. Yeah. And then you, oh, oh, I can also do this. I can get better at this. I can keep moving forward at this. And just consistency is the key. I agree. Really with anything you want to do, especially when it's something that you like. There's a reason why I love doing this because, one, you get to meet interesting people like yourself, and we get to meet. This is an awesome medium. And then it builds something where I've had folks on – that are friends of mine where I get to hear their story mm -hmm. and then I get to know a little bit more about them when most of the time in your day-to-day -day life you kind of meet people and you you talk about oh you know work was fine oh I did this we went out last weekend but then you kind of sit and talk and then you know oh this is why they're interested in my friend uh, Jeremy McWiggan who was on the show who made these custom glasses. Thank you, Jeremy. He is a buddy of mine who he spoke to us about how he got into DJing and how he became a, a really prominent DJ and the steps he had to go through. And then it brings it more into my knowledge where it's like, oh shit, this is, this is the guy that I talk to every, every now and again. And now I know a little bit more about him yeah. and it's great. And I love doing things like this in that way. How encouraging, and, right? It's very motivating. And then for somebody else who's a young up and coming actor who doesn't know what they want to do or how to get into it and is like, you know, I want to I want to be an actor, but I don't know what to do or what steps to take. They mm -hmm. can hear something like this from yes. somebody that's, you know, about to be a full-time paid actor or yeah. somebody that's still starting or somebody yeah. that's working and they can kind of see, "Oh, this is what it takes. This is the grind that you need." and yeah. maybe it motivates them you just got to be you know your I mean? best self honestly <clears throat> i feel like that's what it, i feel like it's all what it's all about if yeah you could be your, and it was like the when i was on doing extra work on the tv shows mm -hmm. holy they take care of them like 
I feel, I mean, there's all sorts of different actors and yeah. like book covers and stuff like that, but the, I feel like the best of them are the sharpest minds. Mm -hmm. And they have their rituals in the morning and they eat well. And you have to do it when you have nothing. Yeah. Like I've so many times I've had last 10 bucks, five bucks, cents, you know? Yeah. And I'm, you know, when you buy a water, a kombucha or a granola, or maybe how many times I've spent my last $6 and went to the movies. Honestly, countless times I've spent yeah. my last, not, not knowing when I'm going to get money again. And when you can build confidence that all you need is water and air, and you can go days without food as long as you have something that's driving you. Mm -hmm. You can, I mean, you can always show up somewhere and someone will feed you. I mean, we're, we live in America. I mean, and I went down to Central America. This was a part of my journey. I lived off mangoes off the trees. I went down with 40 wow. bucks in my pocket and I literally lived in the jungle for several weeks and just ate mangoes and let the rain hit my face and the mosquitoes bite me and crap, yeah. you know, cr ocean crabs crawling on me all night. and. I just needed it. Yeah. I needed to unplug and I grew my hair out and my beard and I came back to America, you know, and uh, you got to leave the comforts of this world behind and yeah. it's not the Lamborghini that will make you happy or I have to be an actor. So you, like I said, it's, it's in the moment finding contentment with nothing and knowing that the universe is really gonna if he can right this there's a biblical i grew up on the bible so it's like it's always easy for me to relate is if god can feed the birds and the squirrels like there's plenty for you i don't you don't need to have fast food or whatnot you literally can california has got f f fruit off the tree yeah i mean you walk through la like i was hungry I was really hungry. I, I had, you know, like I would get, I didn't, you know, I'd get some extra work once in a while, but like I really didn't have a job, and I picked people's grapefruits and also, you know, that grapefruit. There were a lot of grapefruits in L.A. Yeah. And I you was know, like, you just people take care of you when you got a dream and you're going for something, and you're respectful and you're kind and you're courteous, and mm -hmm. you're you really try to do your best not to do anybody harm. And unfortunately, in my ignorance along the path, I have hurt and harmed other beings, but in a sense that it's hurting myself. Because yeah. like, if you're acting out of fear and desperation or just taking whatever comes your way, I've been uncomfortable. I'm like, I deserve if I'm a a, a being say that you know i believe there's a creator i was created for a reason and a purpose mm -hmm. if i was so selected and blessed to be living and everything works great in my eyesight and i passed the eyeball test i got good genetics like i can afford to fail and yeah. i can afford to be hungry and not eat and be numbed out and be a hunter you have mm -hmm. to become a great hunter and be an opportunist right yeah, yeah. I've been judged on that one too. He's such an opportunist. Like you have to go for it. Yeah. And sometimes it's not always the right thing, but you figure it out really quick mm -hmm. what, what's good for you and what's good for everyone. Yeah. Because what else is there if you don't go for what you're, Man, what you, you want to do, what you're chasing? It. You got to go for yeah. it. Some people, like I college educated, I hated it. Yeah. But I did it mm -hmm. and I got honors. I hated it. Because that's what, just what I feel that's like that's what they tell you you need to do. I needed to do yeah. it. I was like, I hate this. Which is, Kind of what comes yeah. down to everything now. It's like you don't need to do anything except what you enjoy, <sighs> what, you, what you want to do. What to if you get have one you day forward. left to live? Yeah. Right? You're going to do what you enjoy to do, mm -hmm. and you're going to believe in the afterlife of some sort. Yeah. Because if you go out and you go rob a bank and freaking rip it up your last day on planet Earth and you're done, like, what's next? You're going to think about what's next. Yeah. And, always do. Yeah, and I believe there's always a tomorrow in an essence where my energy will continue onward. So it's like, what am I, how are we going to leave each other? Yeah. How am I going to greet these, you know, when I come in here? How am I going to be remembered? Not like I want, you know, it's like, you want to be well thought of, I, yeah. I feel. You, One of the things that I've always prided myself on is whenever I've worked on a set or I've done something, people have always said, He's a good worker. Yeah. He does what he needs to. Yeah. He comes in, he works hard, he's nice, he's kind. You tell him to do something, he'll yeah. do it. Yeah, and blue collar people are not afraid of the work. Yeah. That's one thing. We have good work ethic. Yeah. It's like you come in, you work, you're nice, you're kind, you're respectful to mm -hmm. everybody that's there, yeah. and you put in the work. Yeah. And that's what you need. We're all equals. Exactly. I feel in this game of life. Yeah. And then when – so kind of one final question Please. here before we get you out of here. Now that you're starting to get more paid acting work, mm. 
and being more of a full-time actor, what have been some of the stories that you've had either on set, getting the next role, anything like that? Have, have you had any fun stories of that nature? Yeah, I got one for you. I got, I got several, but one that comes to mind that came to mind a few times is I I don't watch horror movies. Okay. I got a, like two rules. One of them is no horror. Like sure. I just sleep well at night. I've watched a couple of scary movies and you don't. I love. I cherish my sleep. Yeah. So that was like one rule. I'm never gonna do a horror movie. But Mad Wife on the, at the premiere, like I, we we can kill. <laughs> can we kill you? Because we they killed me in this other movie, yeah. you know. And they're like, you die well. Like, can we? I'm like. Let me think about it. Let me <laughs> let me read the script. Yeah. And uh, I meditate. I was like, you know what? I think this is going to be fun. I think yeah. it's going to be an opportunity. Give it a shot. And uh, I was on set for, I think, two evenings getting murdered. And I had a great time. <laughs> it was yeah. a wonderful time. Like, yeah. And uh, I can't wait to watch it. I think it's going to be it's another, I believe it's a feature film that will be coming out this fall. However, I met a gent, we vibed, another guy, another fellow actor that was getting mm -hmm. murdered he got a hatchet in the head and i got a pole <laughs> ramped through me in a tree yeah. we vibed and i was like we had a good time like you know when you connect right mm -hmm. and uh we stayed in touch and we followed each other on instagram and i noticed he's very active and i love that like i'm yeah. a very active person like i said let's go for a walk you know, all my business meetings river sparks marina mm -hmm. let's walk and talk about business if we have to be adults yeah let's do we this be grown ups we have to that led to me being in a martial arts movie though a, a oh, dream really? came true through facing my fear and breaking my own rules of going on a horror movie and i had i was offered hey come on we need an extra ninja mm -hmm. great i i'm athletic i i have some martial arts background who was the actor uh nick uh Bolantini? yes another guest of the show yeah Listen to his band. Yeah. So. What's his, his last name? Is so Italian. Bolantini. Bolantini, man. <laughs> I'm adopted. But, uh, That's I, great. And then yeah. you got to do yeah, martial and, arts. And um, yeah. And they were able to like punch and kick me and I can backflip and like exaggerate. So like, yeah, obviously there's, they cut more and more of the extras. We don't need you. But, and then I got offered, uh, invited on to the next weekend and yeah. do more. So it's like one thing leads to another. You just got to be brave. Mm -hmm. Be willing to break the rules, but safety first. Yeah. And hopefully fun intertwines with safety. But that's what I love about acting. It's like, as long as everyone's safe and you go through the guidelines of, mm -hmm. so if you're in an intimate scene of any sort with your fellow, you have to build the rapport. Yeah. I love rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So that's one success story is just, I don't know, be, don't be afraid to break the rules. Yeah. Which, don't your be, own rules. Don't be afraid because yeah. getting out of your comfort zone can yeah. kind of be the best thing for you face in, the fear in certain situations. Yeah. if you're not if your life is not at peril or in danger and you're just afraid go do it yeah go do it try it go 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 dare to be terrible and go do an open mic yeah. and just sit there and be petrified and not maybe say anything and people and feel that terror yeah because nothing harm is being done to you yeah. and you become a better person exactly i acting makes me a better person it, it, it gives me something to strive for and I really appreciate it. Thanks for asking me that. And I really appreciate you inviting yeah. me on the show. It's been it's a wonderful experience here. Yeah, of course. And Thank you. you very much for coming in. Before we do get you out of here. Sure. We'll we're take at, our time. I'm enjoying. We're at the last run here. Beautiful. The last question that mm -hmm. I do have that's more of the general vague question sure. is what's next? What do you have that you're excited about working on next? Do you have any current projects that you have coming up that you're excited that you can talk about mm. or anything like that i i've been really enjoying acting class mm -hmm. i'm so grateful for justine and true talent take two i'm in this weekly uh, acting class and i'm in a scene right now i'm doing a scene with uh, one of my fellows uh, from american hustle okay. and i'm playing christian bale and his character and i love it so i perform again tomorrow night and uh yeah, that keeps me in the vibe in the game, and you never know. Like, uh, I got Justine's like, "Hey, are you available such and such date?" It was a couple days before. I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Mm -hmm. No details given. It's a commercial, and I a couple days earlier I did a local Acura commercial. It was cool, right? Yeah. You know, I got paid to just be cool. No lines, and then this one I show up. It's a national, big budgeted commercial. Wow! It was just you know like. 
Stone Cold Steve Austin's there. Tons of money is there. Mm -hmm. Getting paid really good money to just be there and had some lines and stuff. It was a streaming app, national commercial. You just never know. Yeah. So every day, what gets me out of bed is death, right? The thought of like, this could be my last day. Mm -hmm. And what opportunities, right? So I, I'm a big believer in, you know, stretching, outdoor walking. Take care of yourself. Fill your own cup before you go out into the world to serve because how many, I mean, we, I still do it. Is that you leave just kind of like discombobulated a little yeah. bit and your product sucks. You mm -hmm. just terrible out there. So, you know, wake up in the morning, thank whatever it is that you want to thank for being alive and take some deep breaths and sit still and know that you are the master of your ship. Yeah. And you're the, essentially the destiny is up to you. You just got to show up, dress up, show yeah. up. Just have to And show up. allow things to be done to you, but be willing. No, thank you. Not for me or mm -hmm. yes, please. Just let's do it. Yeah. Well, Chad, I want to thank you again for coming in and doing this Thanks with for me. Having Before me. we get you out of here, promote all of your socials, website, anything like that again for the people to follow. You know, Whatever I would say, like yeah, I, uh, I have not done a radio in a long time or a podcast, but I am very proud of chocolatechad.com. Chocolate uh, yeah, my buddy Tom uh, Fisher, the bourbon blogger, mm -hmm. should, he's at the pre-gaming for the T Kentucky Derby now. Oh, wow. He interviews celebrities, and mm -hmm. he's a big whiskey and cigar guy, but we bumped into each other here in Reno. Mm -hmm. He's been a big – he is a brother to me. He calls me up, and he encourages me. His best things are on the way – don't you know when you're you know yeah, you're feeling those you blues a little bit yeah and he hooked me up man he he made this website for me chocolatechad.com and he uploaded m almost all of my podcasts and, wow. or my radio shows yeah I'm proud of that because I feel like it comes from my higher self and mm -hmm. like I feel setting chat aside it's 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 my gift to the world like if anyone I I wish I was taught earlier how to meditate and sit still and focus yeah. on my breath because that is the key mm -hmm. to all things take is, a breath. Take yeah. a deep breath over Relax. and over and over. Yeah. And yeah, chocolatechat.com, Chad William Michael YouTube, um, Chad William Michael Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm, I'm here to serve planet Earth and bring more smiles than not. Oh, yeah. Right. Chad, thanks, thanks again for being here. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, follow, subscribe on all of our social medias, and talk to you guys next week. <laughs>